We are rolling. Good morning. Welcome back to The Conversation. This is Midlife Crisis Activities. This is our lifestyles and pop culture webcast. Our daily shout out to the world. I'm your host, Patrick Russell. And over there is my very vivacious producer, Veronica. Together, we're here to lend our voices to the noise from a multi-generational perspective to help explain everything that's right and wrong in this world. Happy Taco Tuesday to you, Veronica. Happy Tuesday. Wow. We have a very interesting topic to discuss. Out of the state of Minnesota, there's a couple cases of sexual assault that have highlighted what's been a very big distinction in sexual assault cases that we didn't realize is that when the victim drinks voluntarily, the law looks at those circumstances a lot differently, meaning that it's very hard to get a felony conviction against the accused when it becomes clear that the victim voluntarily drank or took drugs or put themselves into that intoxicated situation that led to that unfortunate sexual encounter. Now. We want to know and we want to discuss whether or not that's right, that's just. Should the law be blind in all circumstances where there is a sexual assault in play? Or should the law be granted the flexibility to understand circumstances, right? I mean, listen, it's one thing if a person drops a roofie in your drink and you become intoxicated and that led to an encounter you absolutely didn't have your right mind to consent to. Yeah. But it's a completely different thing if you spent a day at a music concert drinking all day in the hot sun and flirting with this new person in your life, this wonderful, dreamy, you know, breath of fresh air that turned out to end up in a uh, sexual, let's just call it assault for right now, let's say it did occur. But now we also have to give rise to the idea of what led us to the circumstances and that's what we want to discuss. Should that be true? Should the law care of what circumstances led to the sexual assaults or should there be some leeway as far as sentencing? Not to say that the cues get away scot-free, I'm not suggesting that. But now you're talking about more misdemeanors now. Uh, not having to register as a sexual assault offender wherever you live, that's probably a pretty big big one one. right there. So these are things that are now avoided when the law weighs whether or not your intoxication, which was self-inhibited, self-provoked, self-given, that your actions now need to have some weight in the punishment considering how if we take into account the flirtations, If we take into account what you remember saying, half of which your blacked out, dreamy recollection of the entire day versus your non-recollection of your body language. Let's face it, doctors, psychologists, therapists, even around your water cooler, it's widely accepted. Body language, 70%. What comes out any other way, 30%. You're not going to remember those things and you're going to choose not to remember those things when you're relaying the story in a police office Station, or in yeah. a doctor's office you're only going to remember what's advocating your case at that moment we all yeah. turn into the legal lawyers as soon as we see you know people bringing out their notepads let's yeah. put it that way okay so let me ask you from a younger generation's perspective veronica and a woman's perspective a healthy woman's perspective tell me how do you feel that the law should treat these sexual assault cases your thoughts Okay, well, first of all, just to have it clear on this webcast, we're not saying that raping someone, it can be a man or woman, it's right. Definitely, it's not our point. Thank you our for point that. is that we encounter this story where two people went out and they got drunk, and the lady, the young lady, spent the night with a new friend, and the next day she's waking up and she's like wait what happened here i I mean i didn't agree to this keep in mind that both the men and the woman were drunk right so in that situation my perspective is that i don't believe that neither or the men or the women have to be punished for raping one or the other because you put yourself in danger so let's face it patrick when i was younger and i went out i put myself in a lot of danger let me tell you guys i try not to but if if I'm not being considered, if I'm not being smart about 
who do I go out with? And then how many drinks do I have? What would I have to blame you per se? So let's say that you and I go out, we got drunk, I go to your apartment and we have sex. And then the next morning I'm like, wait a minute, I mean, I'm, I'm married, like what am I doing here? But and then we have sex. So why am I supposed to do or why would I blame you for something that I did to myself? So I, I definitely don't do not agree with someone getting not even a misdemeanor, not even not even a felony, well, which is obviously more than a misdemeanor. But I, I think we have to take um, the circumstances our into actions, account. Our actions. So too. I think that's really what's. There's a lot of advocates that are trying to paint this argument black and white. It, right? It's not black and white. It, yeah, it doesn't matter what the victim did, and I understand that position. But I also understand the court's positions and the idea that there are circumstances, if painted in the correct light, the puzzle could fit to where it really does kind of fall back to, it's really no one's fault, sort of a victimless crime, if you will, considering how can no one can remember exactly what transpired. And I think that's what the courts are trying to recognize. Yeah. We're relying on accounts that are imperfect. And I think that's what they're trying to recognize, the imperfection of the account. They don't know exactly what happened. Yes, they can take the account from what the victim said and even believe every word. But once again, you can't transcribe your body language. You can't describe the non-vocal overtures and flirtations that you gave to the other person that any other reasonable person that would see that minority report time cop to actually see what actually went down now we can actually very much judge blindly when we have perfect uh evidence and perfect you know a perfect idea of what actually happened with the imperfect account all of these courts are just trying to recognize the ability to be flexible to allow for Let's face it, sex plays dangerous. Veronica, you know that. It could be two gladiators in a ring. It could be the damsel in distress. It could be a couple working things out. You know, that emoji didn't mean anything, you know? And it's like, well, yes, but now later on, the day after, you have different feelings, you're sober, different emotions. Now, all of a sudden, you're accountable to people and you're accountable for your actions. And it wasn't just me being free. Shoot, I'm not free. And now I need to address those. Oh, Now, the only way I can do that by keeping my reputation intact is by only remembering, right, the parts of the circumstances that lend to advocacy to your complaint, not to the overall capturing of the truth. Am Uh, I right on that? Yeah, I think these stories have to teach us that uh, we have to be smart about who do we go out with and sometimes it's impossible like I used to go out with friends and I'm I'm like I'm not gonna drink because I don't really even trust my friends when it comes to like making sure that I go home and you don't know Patrick how many times I had to like carry one of my friends to her house to make sure Uh to make sure that she made Uh it home well sometimes me too and and once again when i used to drink and i knew that i wanted to drink a little bit more i used to tell my sister hey come with me and then make sure that you don't drink so i drink and i think that's the best way to do it and i and i believe nowadays you cannot even trust yourself because you can just like have a drink in front of you look at the other side and then now you gotta peel on your on your glass right so i know it's kind of insane and it's kind of like bad that we are in this situation but that's life and if you're not taking care of yourself and then don't drink just get water and don't even like i don't know just don't go out with like people that you don't know well final note for me i absolutely advocate that the courts be given latitude for circumstances especially from a man's standpoint if you have a shy penis and you need to be loved in order for things to work right I mean, there can be no, 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 but the body better be saying yes, 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 or El Toro's not charging, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I guess. Guys, there's no (laughs) right answer, there's no wrong answer, but there's definitely your opinion. Please don't just subscribe to this channel, even though we will be doing this back and forth on a daily basis, but lend your voice to the show, it'll make it a whole lot more fun. Guys, it doesn't matter what comes your way today. It doesn't matter what obstacles or challenges that you may face, you just need to remember one thing. Give him hell. Happy Taco Tuesday, everybody.